Bray. Uh, it's really wonderful to be here. I'm very excited. Uh, normally, I am just the soundboard operator. I shouldn't say just the soundboard operator. Uh, sound is actually really important. It's often overlooked. Uh, but it's actually, I kind of think of it as a good sound is really broadcast 101 in my book, so it's really uh, Bob and Wayne are out of town today, so that's why you're hearing my voice instead. Later on in the broadcast, we will have some visitors from the Newton's Apple Players that I participate in uh, upon occasion when I can. We perform uh, as much as possible down at, down at the Merriweather Theater House. And actually, we're offering theater classes down there, uh, which we're really excited about. We're six weeks into our uh, first class, and we're having a wonderful time down there. <sighs> Hi. Derbersville is a little-known corner of the world, but for Tron Scone, head technician and craft services manager at TV15. Oh, it's it's my whole world. It's it's everything. TV15 is a public access station that recently underwent some changes, mostly by necessity, when two of the station antennas were destroyed by the tornadoes that swept through late last summer. Tron spent most of his adult life as an engineer at General Electric, where he earned the respect of most of his peers and his employers. Nonetheless, Mr. Scone's heart always lay in custom electronics, race car, model train related arts, and ham radio. One ham radio enthusiast publication called him the Sultan of Single Sideband. Yeah, I can't say if that's true or not, but I'll, I'll take it. After retiring from GE, Tron had an abundance of time on his hands, and so it was the perfect chance to give back to the community. He knew he wanted to combine his skills in electronics with his desire to have his voice carried across the airwaves. So he leapt at the chance to help Wayne Gary Stacy and Bob Scavage rebuild the TV-15 antennas and get the low power signal back into the airwaves. When not fixing antenna hookups, Tron's voice can be heard on Sound of the Lakes, a weekly segment featuring poetry by Robert Frost and images and video of local nature spots. He also oversees the TV15 craft services table. This is Tron. Well, well, my initial controversial choice to include my specialty pickle and cream cheese finger witches to the menu has uh, since been a surprise hit. Uh, which is now embraced by most staff members. <laughs> you know, most people go down there with no experience whatsoever, except that they just really want to do a theater show. <laughs> and uh, that's one of the things they teach you down there. Yeah, I mean, you're learning stage, you're learning audience, you're learning uh, a little bit of masking. You're learning a bit about everything, light control, uh, direction, uh, technical direction. So every six, seven, eight weeks, we'll start a new class, new class, new class. I also want to see potentially maybe even like a situation where uh, we could have something you know, on a weekend where people just come out and do advanced theater production, productions, productions. You, you really can't anymore. Uh... So let's see, I've been with Newton's Apple Players about six years now, six, I think. Yep. And and Dana about seven. six and a half? Going on seven. Going on seven. Yeah. So, you know, we've always seen theater as a real uh, Sisyphean task. Mm -hmm. uh, and praise God for that, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, cause, because just like Sisyphus, you know, we're rolling that rock up to the top. Mm -hmm. And just like him, you know, we'll make it. Yeah, we'll make it. Amazing grace, how 
sweet yourself. Well, it's a fine day today. It saved a wrench like me. I wonder if Massa's gonna make beans today. I was so we received a grant uh, to do a historical theater theatric piece and uh, we thought oh Frederick Douglass we got to do Frederick Douglass yeah we, no no one's done him yeah not that we know about no we checked Broadway no one did him there definitely so, has not been done on Broadway yeah we thought he this man has to be put in the theater uh, form it's a bold choice step. though you know racial yeah, racially it was a bold step uh-huh that's true, all right, I know. I'll tell you what, some days I'm just so sick of it. Sick of what, Frederick? Sick of picking these here cottons. Sick of working for them Master Whitey. Well, as the Bible does say, a man gotta work what a man gotta work. But working for no master ain't written in no Bible that I read. <laughs> that's my feeling exactly, Tom. And I think it's about time we did something about it. So we, we felt it was really in poor taste to do blackface. Absolutely. We knew right away that that was not a tasteful choice. And history has taught us that African Americans are offended by that. So, um, but at the same time, we felt it was really important to make a physical transformation into the characters on stage. So, right. So Kim suggested that we, uh, why don't we wear ski masks? Ski masks, yeah. So and that worked out really well. Worked we, out great. And, and gloves, black gloves and black ski masks. And uh, We put an afro wig on the top mm -hmm. and it looks pretty authentic. I think from the audience's perspective, it's about the same as if we did blackface maybe. And from our perspective, it's important too because you can't just go up there as is, come as you are, you know? It's, yeah. You know, it's not radio, it's not theater of the mind. No, it's, uh, you know, like we always say, it's theater of the, the mind's, mind's eye. eye. Mind's eye, yeah. Praying long and hard, and the good Lord Jesus Christ done came to me in a vision. What? Yep. And he said to me, Frederick Douglass, you jive turkey, it's time for you to get your damn self free. My lord, my friend Douglas done had a vision. What do you plan to do about it? Only one thing I can do. Next time Master Waddy comes out here, I'm gonna strangle his to death. Strangle his to death? We're it worked out great. I think this is a very tasteful choice. Yeah. I think some people were scared. The kids were scared by the ski masks. But yeah, but you know, it was a scary time in American history. It was a so. scary time, and if you're not willing to face the truth, yeah. Maybe get someone to get teach you how to read the way, the way uh, Frederick Douglass did. Okay, he could read, yeah. Yeah, he, I think he of had, course, right, cause he had he's someone to teach him how to do it. Yeah, how else would he get to Georgia? Once you strangle them, master, you can do about anything you want. I just about had it up to here with that, master. I know he got bacon, but he never put it in my beans. I tell you what I'd do if I killed them, master. Yeah? I reckon I'd go get some bacon to put in my beans. <laughs> uh, and you know, we understand that theater has the power to shape minds. It has it has the power to mold minds, but what it also has the power to do is to change minds. So, mm -hmm, you know. But what it does have the power to do is cause a bit of a stir. Mm. So, basically, we want people to uh, suspend their belief yeah. when they come. And sometimes people mistake theater for the real thing. Mm, absolutely. And we have to constantly remind people that, you know, it's not real. You know, there's, yeah, it's, it's, there's a fourth wall. Mm-hmm.
until I reach my free. If we're going to rustle some feathers, you know. Uh, the more the merrier. Yeah, the more the merrier. The more the merrier. That's just art. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's called artistic license for a reason. Yeah. Because we have license to do it. Uh, Y'all in words, get back to work. You shouldn't use that word. Who and what, what hell are you? My name is Frederick Douglass, sir, and I'm a literate free man, sir. Well, I don't believe I own any Frederick Douglass in words. Uh, we really, we really struggled a lot with whether to leave in or take out the word, you know, uh, strangle. People would just think uh, he would just went mad strangling people like Paul, Paul Revere. Midnight Strangler. Right, like that guy. I know how to write, and I know what's right. What are you doing, you crazy N-word? And you can't tell me no another way. No how. No how. No how to read and write. And, you know, we think of it as it was a crime of passion. Yeah. It was self-defense. Self yeah. He was defending himself yeah. against these... Uh, pretty. They were pretty bad guys. Yeah, these slave owners were really bad guys. bad guys. Art imitates life and, in the best moments, vice versa. Yeah, it's, that's absolutely vice versa. It's still true to this day. He's been saying that for quite a few years. Yeah, three years. Yeah. I've been saying that for three years. Oh, really? Mm hmm It's very, very, very hard to just walk into a theater and say, hey, you know, I want to do, uh, I want to learn how to do theater shows. You know, you should already know how to do a theater show if you're knocking on the door in the first place. Or I want to do tech stage, or I want to work the lighting gels, you know, whatever, masking, script, or, or what have you. But here you can. Uh, a lot of people can do that. You know, uh, I'm always kind of going for the big roles, uh, but they uh, they never seem to really pan out. Uh, when I want to go viral on the internet, you know, there's there's viral, there's uh, hyperlinks. And in this day and age with uh, media moving at the uh, speed that it does, people really engage uh, with people. So we're hoping that it's going to escalate uh, every, you know, every time we go. Girls go do 
15 is brought to you by the Mindstorm Group and all of its affiliates. Find us on the internet at www.tv-15.com. Click the like button at the top of the page and also watch our videos on YouTube. Then I guess she had to crash. Valium would have helped that bash she said. Thank you and goodbye.